Hey everyone, this is CLS All in One, and today I'm going to be installing an FM modulator in my car. And what this does is it adds an auxiliary input for vehicles that don't have one. So there's a lot of different types of FM transmitters out there for transferring music from a phone or MP3 player to your stereo. But some of the most popular ones are the ones that plug right into your cigarette lighter and they transmit it wirelessly from that point to your radio. And how these devices work is you plug in an auxiliary cord to them and then it broadcasts an FM signal which you tune into on your car radio. But I'm not a big fan of these styles of FM transmitters. There's a lot of interference and the sound quality is just not that great. But this particular product is an FM modulator and it's wired directly with your antenna. So there's a lot less noise interference and the sound quality is a lot better in my opinion. So to install this on my vehicle, I have to use a couple of antenna adapters. I have to use one for the input and one for the output. If you have a standard antenna plug-in, these adapters are not necessary. So inside the box we got some instructions to give you a diagram on how this is supposed to be wired. It also comes with an on off switch so you can power the FM modulator on and off when you choose. I'm going to direct wire mine, I want mine to stay on all the time, but I'll show you how to use this switch if you want to. And here's a look at the modulator itself. This is made by iSimple. You can purchase these at Best Buy or buy these online. So this has a two channel input for your left and right channel. So for an example, if you're trying to plug a phone into this modulator, you want to use a cable that has a headphone jack on one end, and on the other end of it, it's going to have composite ends, red and white, for left and right channel. It also has a switch to select which frequency you want to use when you tune it in on your radio. And here's your other connections on the modulator. You're going to have an antenna input. You're going to have an antenna output. Then you're going to have a power wire. So you can either hook this to a constant 12 volt power and turn off the switch, or you can hook it up to your 12 volt ignition where this only turns on when you turn the car on. And there's also a ground wire that either hooks to the chassis of the car or other existing ground wires. So to install this in my car, I need to remove my car stereo. So I'm going to start with removing the dash panels. So to remove my dash panels, I'm going to be using a nylon pry tool. And because this is made of a soft but rigid material, this won't damage my dash panels or dash. If you try just using a flat blade screwdriver to remove your dash panels, chances are you're going to scratch your panels up and cause some damage. And that's probably not going to make you very happy. Most of your 2000 vehicles and up have dash panels that just pry off like this. But on, some of your, but on some of your older vehicles, the dash panels are secured with screws, so they may remove a little bit different. So I have all my dash panels popped loose, but now I have to unclip some of my wire harnesses that power the electronics. And again, depending on what vehicle you have, you may or may not have to unplug wire harnesses. Now it's time to remove my stereo, and I got six screws that are securing it that I'm going to have to remove. So I got all my screws removed, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out, but now I have some wire harnesses on the back of my stereo I'm going to have to unplug. So I got multiple things to unplug in the back of my stereo. This is my satellite antenna I'm going to unplug, then my radio antenna, then I have three wire harnesses that have to be unplugged also. Now my stereo is loose, and I can set that off to the side. So now I'm going to be tying into two wires on my existing car stereo wiring. I'm going to be tying into the ground wire located right here. This is the chassis ground wire. And I've already spliced into my radio wiring using a terminal crimp butt connection. And if you want to learn more about making terminal crimp connections, be sure to check out my guide up in the corner or in the links down below. Then I'm also going to be tying into the 12 volt ignition wire located right here. Now this is a wire that has power when I turn on the ignition. When I turn the ignition off, there's no power. So now I'm going to connect the ground wire from my iSimple modulator to the ground wire on my existing car stereo wiring. So I'm going to go ahead and crimp the bug connector here. After I crimp it, I always give it a little tug to make sure it's nice and secure. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect my 12 volt power and do the same thing. If you're having problems finding the 12 volt ignition wire, you can use a test light to figure it out. One end of the test light hooks to our ground, the other end of the test light tests the wire. And you're looking for a wire that turns on when you turn the key on and off when you turn the key off. So I got my ground wire and my 12 volt wire hooked up. Now it's time to hook up the switch if you choose to use one. So the switch plugs in just like this. Then you can mount the switch wherever you choose on your dash. For instance, I can mount it right here on my dash by drilling a hole. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put any extra holes in my car that don't need to be there. Another thing you can do is you can just leave the switch on, then just tuck it away behind your dash somewhere out of sight. But I'm not going to do that either. I want a cleaner install, so I'm actually going to cut the wires, reconnect it, 
and get rid of the switch completely. But I don't recommend doing this if you plan on returning it or for warranty purposes. But for my vehicle, I know I'm not returning it and I've already tested it out and I like it, so I'm cutting the wires. Now I need to join the two wires together, so I'm going to be using a terminal crimp butt connection. I just want my modulator to automatically turn on every time I turn my stereo on, so for my setup, the switch was useless to me. So I got my cut wires showing back together, now I'm going to hook up some audio cords. So this is what my audio cable looks like, but it's a little bit longer. It's got the headphone jack on one end, and the composite cables on the other end. So this part's pretty easy. You just plug in the red cable on the red input, and the white on the white input. Now I'm going to plug in my antenna wires. This is the antenna input and the antenna output. So here's a look at my antenna wire that plugs in the back of my car stereo. This is not a standard antenna plug-in. So I'm going to have to use this adapter to plug it into the modulator. So we just plug in one end of the adapter to the existing car antenna plug-in. And now it's converted it to a standard antenna plug-in that we can plug into the FM modulator. Now I need to plug in the other adapter to the output side of the FM modulator. So this adapter converts it from the regular car antenna plug-in back to the original car stereo antenna plug-in. And again, if your car stereo has a standard car antenna plug-in, these adapters are not needed. So here's a look at the frequencies you can select. You can select 87.9 or 88.3. I just use whichever one it's on first and test it out. And if that one has any static or interference, then I switch it to the other one. Then on the bottom is your level control. So this controls the level of volume. What I like to do is set it about three quarters. If you set it all the way up, sometimes you get some distortion and it doesn't sound as good. So I got all my wires hooked up. It's time to go ahead and plug in my car stereo and hook my car battery back up and test this out. And for an auxiliary device, I'm actually going to be using a tablet and that's also going to be my new head unit. So the modulator is set at 87.9. So that's what I need to tune my FM radio to. So I'm going to go ahead and tune that to 87.9 and once I'm tuned into 87.9, I should hear audio from my tablet. So I got it all tuned in now and it sounds pretty good, so I'm not going to mess with the frequency. But if you want to mess with the level gain, if it's too loud, you can go ahead and turn that down by using a small flat blade screwdriver. So I got all my settings the way I want it and I like the way it sounds, so now I'm going to go ahead and tuck my FM modulator behind my dash here and secure it with double sided tape. Now it's time to put everything back together. Well, thanks for watching. This is CLS All One. If you want to hear more from me, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see more of my videos, just click any of these links.